Hello, my stamping friends. How is everyone doing today? It's time for Paper Crafting Playdate. My name is Robin Armbrecht at Really Robin Stamps, and I am thrilled that you are going to join me today. It is November 18th, 2022. This is episode 75 of Paper Crafting Playdate, so I am thrilled to have you join me. And uh, definitely leave me a comment and let me know where you're watching from and what you are up to this week before Thanksgiving. Um, what I have for us today is a couple of projects that are great to have in your back pocket when you need to make a quick little treat or a favor or something at your table for the holidays. So I think you're gonna really enjoy it. So I'm gonna flip us over to the um, table so that we can get started. So if it is Friday for you, happy Friday. But no matter what day it is when you're watching this, I hope that you're having a great crafty day. Let's see how that looks. I have some things to share with you. There, that looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. like that. Okay. So if you are a fan of many different demonstrators in the Stampin' Up! world, you probably heard about the amazing onstage event that happened last weekend in many different locations. It was very, very fun. And so I have some things to share, um, some little gifty things that I got. And Let's start with these. These were made by Stampin' Up! folks, and they were attached to gifts that I received. And look how, one, two, three, four, five, six, six little iridescent rhinestones on that. I feel very loved. This is a fun, it's just a little tag. It's not even a card, but it uses a four by six piece of designer series paper mounted on a four and a half, or four and a quarter by five and a half inch um, piece of cardstock. So it's kind of, that's kind of neat. I think this would be a great way to um, just make some decorations that you could hang. You could put a photo on there. I love this little um, idea. And then this was another little tag. So sweet. Just attaching all these little pieces together. Um, again, five rhinestones. Feel so loved. This card is from Susan. Susan's watching. Thank you so much for this beautiful card. I love how you used the um, element from the paper pumpkin and this beautiful little um, like hive uh, foiled, I don't even know what, stencil kind of thing. Um, and then you, you did all that beautiful stamping with that stamp set, but you put it on that gorgeous cinnamon cider um, I love that paper. Thank you so much, Susan. This is a beautiful, beautiful Thanksgiving card. This is from Marilyn. She created this with some die cuts. Isn't that a beautiful little cluster there? I appreciate this card so much, Marilyn. Um, and this is from Julie Davison. Uh, some of you probably watch her as well, and she sent me this little um, congratulations card for my achievements. Look at this fun Thanksgiving card. This is from Wanda. Beautiful. I love how you put the gingham paper and then with this fun little um, die cut on there. It's really cute. Thank you, Wanda. This is from Shannon West of Stampin' Up! And she was um, sent me a little congratulations on my achievements. And this is from Sherry. Let's see, is Sherry watching? Let's see, I wasn't paying attention to my comments here. Let's see. Hey, Margie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Susan and Sarah, Crystal. I know, Julie, you know what? I didn't, Julie wishes she got to swap with me. You know what? I didn't even bring any swaps to this event. So I've, I was like, I want to swap with you too. So that's why I'm going to mail you a card. 
<laughs> You're so sweet. So this is from Sherry. She's usually on with us live and she made one of those amazing colorful pocket cards for me and she came and found me and I got to meet her in person. It was so much fun. Same with Julie. Um, and then this is from Sue Sheets. She's uh, one of my butterfly friends team and she did this a couple weeks ago on her Facebook. It's called Stampin' with Sushi and um, this is called a column fold. So it folds like this and then it displays like this. So it's a really neat little um, kind of card to display. So we might have to tackle this um, on one of the play dates because I think that's a really neat idea. Thank you everyone for those amazing creations. All right, so we are going to start with a, let's see, I'm going to put my hostess coat up here. Uh, there we go. Up. <laughs> it's delayed. I'm sorry. It's, there we go. Hey, let's try that. Um, we'll just barely make it show. That is the hostess code for November. You get to choose when you order um, from me this month, you get to choose between some essentials like the grid paper and the pierce mat and the silicone mat. So those are all great items to have in your stash. So we're going to start out with a very basic, um, old, old idea. If you've been stamping for a long time, um, this idea is so old, you probably forgot about it. But I love this when I start to think about um, treats and sharing little gifty things during any kind of holiday. This is a great little box. It's called a 2468 box. So um, yeah, give me a little um, smiley face if you've heard of a 2468 box before. This is so easy. All right, so what you start with is a piece of paper that's five and a half by eight and a half. So it's the exact same um, size that you would use when you make a card. So half a sheet of cardstock. And you're going to score it at two inches. Then this is along the long edge, four inches, six inches, and eight inches. Okay, so since this is eight and a half, you get these beautiful two inch sections and then you get this nice half inch section for um, the little flap that's going to hold the box together. Now you're going to turn it so that you're scoring along the short edge and you're going to score on one side one inch. Actually, no, I did that wrong. Hold on. I'm thinking of my next project, so I'm just going to save that because it's a it's like a transition from one project to the other. So let me just do this again. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, so this is for the two, four, six, eight box. You're going to then on the short edge along that edge you're just going to score at two inches and that's going to be the base of the box and then this is going to be the box okay so let's hello wendy great to have you here everybody what are you up to okay so i'm just Increasing all of those score lines so that we can see what's happening here. All right, so here is two, four, six, eight, and then you turn it and you do two inches. Now you're going to trim all of these score lines along this bottom. See, those are the bottom flaps. So 
So just cut right on the score line, right up to the two inch score line here that goes across. Okay, so these are gonna be the flaps on the bottom. This piece right here, we don't need. So you can just cut that off. And this is where our adhesive is gonna go. So let's just miter these corners and just cut off a tiny little wedge like that. Okay, this is so easy. Now you're gonna need some strong adhesive, so I recommend tear tape, seal plus, or liquid glue. Either one of these will make this box very sturdy and you won't have to worry about it coming apart when you fill it up with goodies. So I'm gonna put tear tape here because that's super easy. And then pull that off. Now this box is so nice because it's so symmetrical. Just fold this over. You don't have to like put it together like this, right? And try to line that up. Just leave it flat, fold that over, and then this is gonna go exactly where it needs to go, right there. So now you've got this nice two inch box and these just fold in. And so I like to put a little bit of adhesive on the last two flaps. like that, and this is gonna give us a nice sturdy base so that you can put all kinds of things in here and they it, it won't sag. Okay, so there is our 2468 box. Of course, you could stamp on this um, beforehand. You could even, you can make this out of designer series paper. It just depends on how sturdy you want it to be. And then, I'm going to pick one side as the front and I'm going to attach a little piece of designer series paper. This is the sweetest Christmas package that has all these beautiful um, green, red, all that good green, red, uh, pool party, garden green, real red, pool party, sweet sorbet. Love these colors for Christmas. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use all the adhesives on this project. Yes, Julie, this makes a great little retreat project and and like gift giving thing because you can really um, change the basic design in so many different ways. So you can leave it like this and have things coming out of it, or you can close it. And the easiest way is to just pinch those sides like that and just squeeze the top. Again, this is super simple and fast. You could add more um, complication to this if you wanted to make it, but just to make it very simple, you're just gonna pinch it together and then you get this beautiful looking little simple box. So I'm gonna hold mine together with the ribbon that's gonna close it. So I'm taking an eight inch circle punch and finding the center. And punching. Now if you can't punch all the way through, you can do one side and then line it up and mark it and do the other side. So we're gonna decorate this with some of the pieces in the Sweet Candy Canes. I've already taken the designer series paper and I've um, one whole sheet of this designer series paper works with the dies um, that are in this bundle. And so I just cut out two of the candy canes that would coordinate with this paper. And we'll just do one of those kinds of things. And then I stamped the Christmas cheer on a little oval and then I stamped the leaves and cut those out. So we'll just make this beautiful little cluster here. And I'm gonna just make sure when I put this together that I leave space um, for the ribbon. So 
So let's put this one like that. Do you like to make things um, to have at your dinners when you meet with family? Do you like to have something a little special at people's um, placemats, name tags? What do you usually do for your family? I'm going to move that up a little bit. I don't want it exactly... even. Okay. So this little box would be great for any kind of gift. This You can put a little um, votive candle in here. This fits um, one of those little travel size um, lotions or the hand sanitizers. Of course, you can fill it with um, goodies. Um, chocolates and candies and things like that. So we'll do that and then we'll stick our leaves back there. So I picked out some ribbon to close this. I've got the Real Red from the Red Green Combo Pack. And then I have the Sweet Sorbet. And we'll just make a bow. If you're going to tie a bow, you need about 16 inches. If you're going to tie a knot, you need only about 6 inches. Okay, I'm going to give myself lots of ribbon here to tie a bow. Annie. Oh, I wish we would have been able to connect. Thank you. That was a fast day. It was jam-packed with goodies. Uh, treats and seeing uh, all these demonstrations so it was hard to um, focus <laughs> on much because you were trying to soak it all in all right so I'm going to tie a knot first and then a bow Okay, so we'll just adjust this and get those loops the right size. I guess I could have added some green in here too. Okay, I will fiddle with that more later, but that is essentially the 2468 box. Super easy um, to just put together and fill with whatever kind of goodness you want. Now you can also make this taller. Just use a whole sheet of um, cardstock and um, you can make it, you know, any height really that you want it to be. 
So there is our 2468 box. You've got to just go make yourself a little pattern if you've never made one or if you have made one, but it's been a long time. Um, just go revisit this idea because it's a great way to just, you can just whip up a ton of these, right, at one time in one sitting. Okay, so we're going to take this idea. And we're going to change it just a little bit to make what I'm calling a uh, pinata, mini pinata popper. How's that for a mouthful? So one of my table mates at OnStage um, was... Um, Sue Sheets, who I keep talking about, she you definitely please go visit her um, Stampin' with Sushi. She does videos every week as well and has great ideas. So she gave everybody at our table this little gift right here. See how it kind of looks like the 2468 box? Because it's just a variation of the 2468 box but it has some special features. All right, so we're gonna start again with a half sheet of cardstock, um, five and a half by eight and a half. And the process begins the same in that you're gonna score it at two, four, six, and eight, just like the box, the original box we just did. So this time you're gonna score from both sides, one inch from one side and two inches from the other across the short edge here. One of these is going to make the base. So this one inch right here is going to make the bottom. And then we're gonna do two inches on the other side from the other side, and that's going to be the top. Okay, so we fold on these lines the same way. like this. Okay, so the one inch flaps are the bottom, so it's slightly different um, than the other one, and you'll see why we're doing that. Two inches are on the top. So we will cut on the score lines just like we did. And this little square gets cut off. And then this one also gets cut off. And then just cut out a little wedge so you've got a nice place for your adhesive. Okay. All right, you're gonna love this. Here is if you wanna take a screenshot here, I will have the PDF as normal available um, to download, but here is what I just did, two, four, six, eight, and then one inch, two inches. This is a variation here if you wanna score it, and I'll show you what I mean um, in just a second. And then there's where the adhesive goes, and this is gonna show where the little um, hole punches is hole punches are. <laughs> All right, so let's put this together. Okay, 
So there's our box. Now the top is going to create kind of like a milk carton top. So this is a nice variation. So two of the flaps are going to just stay together and you can adhere them together if you want to, but they won't really come apart. Um, so you can just kind of lay them together or you can glue them, whatever you want. I'm gonna just glue them for stability. Okay, then these two flaps are going to come together on the top and create the place for the ribbon. Okay, so you've got some options here. So on my uh, pattern here, I put this little half inch score line. If you want to have a kind of a precise fold at the top, you can score a half inch before you put the box together. And then that will kind of give you a little, a nice little um, fold. And I'll, the next one I'm gonna show you will have that. Otherwise you can just put these together and then you get this kind of neat hanging thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach mine because it's easier to put the hole in. So I'm just using a little bit of the snail. Or it's not snail anymore, it's seal plus. And then pinching that together so that I have this up here. And we'll punch our hole as long as we're working up at the top. This is again, just an eighth inch hole punch. All right, so let's decorate this. I have brought out some of the flitting florets, fitting, flitting. Designer series paper. We're gonna make this for Christmas. So this piece is one and a half by nine inches. And we're gonna wrap this around our box, kind of right in the middle. Then I'm gonna layer a little bit of the, the gingham, and this is three-fourths of an inch. So I didn't, you know, you don't have to score around the edges. You can just get that attached. Um, you don't, what I'm trying to say is you don't have to score your designer series paper. Just once you get it glued on then just kind of pinch those sides. And that way you've got a lot of flexibility to put that around and not have to score it first. Okay, so this is coming together nicely. So I'm gonna pick this to be the front. And I wanted to use some of the dies from this all spruced up set. And I picked these two ornaments here and I cut them out of some of the cardstock that coordinates and then some of the designer series paper that coordinates with these colors. And I already put one together. So you cut, so these dies, 
when they cut, they give you the, the center of the ornament and they give you the um, outline of the ornament so that you can do something like this with them. And since I'm, I'm going to be, there's my front, I'm gonna be mounting them kind of off a little bit of the side of the box, I really needed a way to attach these together. And so what you can do is take one of the adhesive sheets and we'll use it just a little bit differently than normal. I'm just really using it to kind of attach these two pieces together. So I'm gonna put the outline down first and then the insert of the designer series paper. And I did save this, this piece right here so I could tuck that back in like that. I'm gonna save that piece, and stick it back on my paper there. And then what you would do is you would just cut around this and just leave the backing on for this project. If you were gonna glue this to a card, you could then take the backing off and glue it. But I'm gonna pop this one up, if that makes sense. So now these are attached together. So it's a little sticky on your fingers, but you could also use um, scotch tape if you wanted to just put some tape along the back. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean those scissors when I'm done. There might be a better way to do this. Okay. I cut that very quickly, so it's not a terrific job, but I think it'll it'll serve our purposes here. Okay, so what I wanted to do is put the message on here. So we're gonna use the Merry Christmas. Some evening evergreen. And we'll take this cute little background stamp. It has little hand-drawn snowflakes. And we'll just add a few of those. Okay, now we'll put this together. So I'm gonna put one like this. go back and trim these a little bit better more carefully when I'm done here all right so we have our ornaments and we are almost set here so let's add our ribbon to the top 
And then I'm going to show you how the pinata feature works because that is the coolest part of this whole thing. So you can add your ribbon in a bunch of different ways. You can tie it in a knot. Um, you can tie it in a loop. Just depends on how you're going to display. If you want this to be like an ornament, um, something that gets hung, then you kind of want to make sure you have a loop. So I'm going to make my loop with this shiny sparkly, what's it called? Iridescent trim. And I'm going to just put it right through the hole very easily and then make a twisty knot on top. That twisty knot is the official that and then you can fray those little edges but then I want to tie in some of these colors as well and so I'm going to tie at the base of my loop here let's see how a bow works Okay, so I just start with a knot and then I'm gonna tie a little bow. By the way, I didn't even mention it, but there is a major sale happening online from Stampin' Up! It's called Seasonal Sale. There are just about almost everything in the annual catalog is on sale. Um, punches, all of the, the dies, the um, embossing folders and stamp sets um, are all at discount. So if you are looking to do a little shopping, definitely check out the sale things because um, I don't know that they've had this many items on sale at one time before for a kind of a pre-holiday sale. I'm going to add just a little knot here of the other color. So we've got soft succulent and evening evergreen and then those little pops of blue from the paper. I think this makes a really fun Christmas um, color combination. Okay, so there is our front. All right, now we got the fun part to go here. This is the best part. So the, the thing that you need to finish the bottom are two squares that are one and three fourths inch um, square. And you're going to punch a hole in one of them right in the middle and then pick another piece of ribbon. I'm gonna take the soft succulent and you're gonna need about maybe six inches. So loop it and where the end of the loop is, you wanna stick that through the hole. This is gonna create a pull. So you want like an inch uh, to two inches sticking out, just depending on how you want it to look. And then on the other side, you're gonna tie a knot so that it will not come out of the hole. So you might need a double knot, just depends. Okay, so I'm gonna trim this. And then your other piece is going to cover up. So we've got this. So we have our knot here, and then we've got this little pull, and we're gonna cover this up. With our other piece. So it will not be absolutely flat because there's a knot in there, 
just get those edges lined up and sealed together. Has anybody made one of these before? Okay, so once that's together, this is the bottom. All right, look how cool this is. So what you're gonna do is you're going to fold the bottom like you would fold a cardboard box for storage when you have to overlap the ends. So you're going to put, um, start with one. You know, when you do that, you uh, you go like this, right? You go one, you go around, and then the last end has to tuck underneath the first one you started with, correct? All right, so, but we're gonna add this little pull feature. So go ahead and put in one, and then two, and then slide this in here and hold on to that ribbon with your finger. This is where you need an extra set of hands. And then continue to go around like that. And then you're going to tuck. This is the hard part. You're gonna tuck that corner in like that. Okay, and this stays here. So now we basically put like a false bottom on this box so that when you fill it with goodies, so here's how it looks, you can pull this, ah! <laughs> okay, I needed a better knot, didn't I? All right, so hold on, I can fix this. I'm going to, instead of having my knot be, um, hidden we'll just make it we'll just make it showing but in theory um i think it's because this ribbon is a little slippery in theory you pull out the false bottom and then whatever treats you have inside the box just kind of tumble down it's so cute so let me tie a double knot here and we'll see if that helps All right, one more time, let's try this. Hold on to that ribbon. So this would be really cute to hang on the tree or um, on a garland. You could do you know, an advent kind of thing, a countdown of some kind. Um, there's so many ideas. So let's see if this works this time. So you pull that out and then the little treats come out. So that is the popper, the miniature pinata popper. And again, let me just put this little pattern out here. Here's your pattern and the things that you need. For that, it is super fun. Thank you, Linda. All right, so I'm gonna tuck this one back in together, but let's show you, an oh, I forgot to show you this one here. This is the first idea. Um, this is another design of the 2468 box. And I just, instead of using designer series paper, I stamped on it. Meant to show you that earlier. So here is another pinata popper. And I used this stamp set here, Leaves of Holly. Beautiful. So I made the top a little bit different and here's where I scored it. Instead of just pushing those together like this. I scored it and attached it to the top of the box to just make it look flat. So you can get a little bit of a different look to it. And then I actually used the corner punch on that just to make it a little bit different. So that, okay, we need an embellishment on this. 
And let's pull out these guys here. Yeah, I kind of just like that little pop of blue there. Okay, so I wanted to show you This is my um, pinata popper that I'm going to do for our family for Thanksgiving. And I am so happy I get to still use this stamp set because I was not ready. I'm not ready to put this amazing fall stamp set away. I love it so much. So I'm playing with this rustic harvest paper. But I had another idea, so let's just talk about the inside of the pinata popper for a minute, because obviously candy um, is an obvious choice. And um, nuggets are very fun because they are um, very easy to be covered with paper. So if you haven't done this before, I highly recommend you get a bag of nuggets in your favorite designer series paper and just make some pretty nuggets. So I'm going to cover this one. It takes a piece of one inch by three inches, so it doesn't take very much paper. And you just start at the bottom and then just wrap it around like that. And then you've got a nicely little decorated coordinating nugget. So do that, but I thought it would be kind of neat um, to pull in some of the pieces of the stamp set and then just create a little note that could go inside the pinata along with the candy so that um, there's like a little special message for Thanksgiving. And so I pulled out the, the heart duo, the scalloped heart and the regular heart. And we're going to make a little message here. So I've got two hearts in basic white and then we'll do our scallop heart in Cajun craze and so let's decorate this I love the little um, you're such a blessing image and I thought this would be very neat to put a little message about why you are thankful for somebody in your family. So we're going to decorate this one little heart and use all these fun little um, flourishes here. And then we'll, <clears throat> we'll add a couple leaves. And get some scratch paper. I'm gonna stamp off just so that my leaf is nice and light. I stamped on my scratch paper here. And we'll just put a couple little leaves. take some of the mossy meadow and just give it a little color around so it coordinates with our our box okay here's the fun part so you're going to take this top part and I'm going to bump up the top of the heart at the half inch line approximately and we're going to use the scoring blade on the cutter just to score a 
about a half inch down. And then this is just gonna make a little, um, a little note card so you can write in the middle. So I'm only gonna put glue on the top part of the heart. Keep leaving my glue just open. That's not really helpful. So it's just attached right at the top there so you can write your little message on the inside. And then we'll put this on the scalloped heart. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I'm pretty excited to make that today. So I'm gonna just make it flexible here so it doesn't, uh, so it's a little bendy. And then So we'll just practice. So we'll put in our chocolates and we'll put this little note in here. And then let's see, we'll do this. So the more you play with it, the little bit easier it is to put back together and to pull apart. Obviously I'm gonna put more, some more candy in there. But these will sit at the table, so they will make a nice little um, decoration. Um, and then, obviously, they can hang them up later, or maybe I'll save them, use them again. So you pull, <laughs> you pull that out. And there is your fun thing. Look at this, came apart again. So I think what I needed to, to do is I put... Um, I just did one knot and I definitely need to do more than just one knot when I did this. So um, that is what I have learned today. So I would recommend that when you tuck your knot in there to make it um, a little bit bigger and then add some more adhesive right around the knot so the knot is also very secure. Use a thin staple. Yeah, that might work. You could staple that onto the one. Good idea. I mean, you could also just have the knot go all the way through the two pieces. Um, it just would, you know, it's not gonna show. It's gonna be on the inside. So you'll have to experiment with that a little bit. I've only made a few of these. So um, this is, this I'm learning too. Anyway, what do you think about this little note? That's gonna be fun, right? Uh, I love it. I love it. So let's let's look at our little boxes here. So we have a little Christmas ornament to hang on the tree or a table place setting. And then we have our 2468 box that will be great to add all kinds of things into. Which one are you going to try first? I hope you love this idea as much as I do. I think it's a really great opportunity to um, do something kind of special uh, for holidays. Um, I was talking with um, somebody um, where I work and they were, they were talking about... Um, having a, a gender reveal type of thing for their new grandbaby. And I thought, well, how fun would it be to use one of these and make the um, decoration to be just nice and um, neutral and then fill it with all kinds of fun little, um, you know, boy or girl type of candies or sequins or M&Ms or whatever, right? Um, so that 
I think that would be a really great way to get everybody involved in a, in a nice inexpensive way to make kind of a gender reveal. Of course, you could make a little window on here too if you wanted um, somebody to see what was inside. You could make create a little um, window inside too. So I hope you loved this and you are going to give it a try, 2468. So easy, right? So easy. Um, and so this is, I'm going to do a little series on ornaments, um, the next, um, next few whatevers, um, I'm going to record some of them and I'll do some live, but this is our next project here. I promised we would work on this star ornament. And so this is the very next one that I have planned and, um, you're going to love this ornament idea as well. So stay tuned and um, thank you so much for watching today. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Thank you.